Welcome to Live Let Thrive, a podcast about the Airbnb life, the share economy, and everything in between. Here are your hosts, Micah and Steve. Hello, hello, hello. And welcome back to another exciting episode of Live Let Thrive. <laughs> what is up, Micah man? I am chilling, Stevie Stacks. How you doing? Oh, good, man. Recovering from a potential guest um, kind of berating us a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Long days, long days. Yeah, people are all on edge with this COVID, you know, lockdown, re-lockdown thing going on. Oh, well, we give them the benefit of the doubt. If you want to be a guest on Live, Let, Thrive, please have a laptop and a microphone. That's all we ask. Maybe a good set of headphones, too. That is all we ask. We're gonna get. We're gonna promote the hell out you. We're gonna get you out there. You know, hit us up and come correct, and we will help you out. That's all I'm saying. Facts. Yeah. <laughs> you, you gotta meet. Though? You gotta meet us halfway, right? Yeah. Uh, um, I've been good, man. I just, um, yeah, it's just it's a me and you up today, and that's cool. It's like um, like spur of the moment because we had a guest lined up and that fell through, but we always we always you know have fun together doing this. Um, you know. Picking each other's brains. This is episode 131 of your favorite air, favorite Airbnb, VRBO, Home Away, Turo, all that stuff podcast. Speaking of Turo, real quick. Uh, hey, man. With Hertz oh, yeah, going out of business. Good, uh... I had a good little take. Uh, with Hertz going out of business, you know, bankrupt after like 100 years of being in business. And um, these other ones are struggling, man. They, they got these massive inventory of cars and expensive ass airport parking lots they got to pay for and all this shit. I think... Um, Turo might be sitting pretty, man. Who knows? I mean, they're the Airbnb of of written out your car, right? So they don't have any inventory. They have zero inventory. They have they don't pay for parking lots, and they they're written out your car, and making money off you. That's that's the share economy. That that could definitely be a thing with Turo. Uh, people making money. I mean, because it took us two hours, an hour and a half to get a rental car when we went to Miami. Oh so, shit! Um, and, I, and I didn't know. Maybe I'm like, maybe it's from them selling off most of their inventory. Um, but then like they didn't have enough people out there washing the cars and getting them in. So it's that interesting. Hurts? Uh, that hurts? this was with, um, thrifty. thrifty oh, okay. I believe it was with thrifty and it, it like people were complaining, you know, but it was crazy. They upgraded our car to a SUV. So we were cool with it, but oh, that's yeah, that could be, that could be a good little interesting thing to happen to us Turo. Man, that happened to me in Maui because I, I went for the lowest price. Of course, most of us look at all the prices. Oh, I get this one, you know, I can save 100 bucks. And mm-hmm. I guess a lot of people think the same way. So we got to Maui and we, and first of all, you have to wait for a damn bus to take you to wherever your car is. And there was this freaking line, you know, for whoever we did, Thrifty or one of the budget, one of those ones. Mm-hmm. And um, so you couldn't put everybody on the bus at the same time. It was pre-COVID, so you pack them in. But still, man, it was like two hours, man. I was like, man, it's the, after an eight-hour flight, the last thing you want to do is wait two hours to get your damn car, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then we got to the place, and there's long-ass lines in there. It's like, man, forget this, you know. I almost I, I like – Going for the cheapest thing ain't always the best thing, you know. That might be a theme of our show. That that is true. Um, cause I, I remember we man, cause I don't know if you ever been to Miami Airport, but like to get a rental car, but you got to go through like two different Skylinks. It's like you got to go through a Skylink walk, like it's a mile walk. It's like <laughs> damn, dude. And then you get there, you got to wait an hour. It's like yeah. And this one dude, he went off up there. They're like, uh, sir, can you go to the back line? It's like, man, I ain't going to the back line. I've been waiting here an hour and a half, and y'all said my <laughs> car ain't ready. It was going off, man. I was like, damn. <laughs> People, seriously, though, you know. But Turo might be a good little thing to hop into. Um, if I was going to do a Turo, if I would I would be very uh, market dependent on that. I would go to, like, Miami's red states that are tourist friendly. I well, see, you know, it's funny that I said that. A couple of shows ago, I was like, you know, if you're going to travel right now, go to Republican states. Mm-hmm. And it seems like they're the one. But the, but the, but the caveat to that, because you went to Miami and my see the, the, the states are red but the city. The big cities are usually blue. So a little. So Miami went and shut everything down on your ass. The state was cool, you know, and then they started shutting things down. So I don't know. I keep, I don't know what kind of advice to give anymore, but it's a big messed up world right now. Yeah, uh, yeah, you know, because yeah, the tourist areas of Florida are very uh, are the blue parts, and then they start shutting down beaches. And I was like, damn. So, but we still had fun. But yeah, uh, the but like 
states I would look at, and it's funny because I was just talking to Adam, Adam James before this show, and um, states I was looking at, he was talking about places like Tulsa, and he said Tulsa didn't get hit by COVID, and I was saying Arkansas didn't get hit. I don't think Tennessee got hit. Um, I would be like, like just like if you're going to be market dependent with tour, I'd be market dependent with short term rentals. Like, go to areas that didn't get hit by COVID. You know, make a list of those areas, small rural areas and red states that people got to drive to. Those book solid. You know what I mean? Yeah, these places like Dallas, Houston. I think they got hit. Um, you know, of course, your tourist places got hit. Everything in Cali shut down. Matter of fact, Again. Cali shut down everything and said that everybody was going to school online and I think San Diego and LA. So there's no, you're not going to school. So, and I still haven't no, I don't know what tech decision Texas has made on that. Um, I know my job told us we ain't going back into the office for the rest of the year. So. <laughs> yeah. Wow. yeah. They were like, it's free. It's no point. He said, man, we, yeah, nobody's going back for the rest of the year. So it's, a, it's, it's crazy what's happening though. But you know, the real estate game still works. Uh, as long as the bank's giving out money, I think, you know, you're in a good position. Um, you asked me a very good question the other day about um, long-term renting my places that I'm, I'm doing the birth strategy on. And I don't know if people know. Did, did, did we talk about that last week? Uh, we might have mentioned it. What, what was it again? About, um, you know, actually – putting the uh, leasing the place back to yourself oh, back to, your, to LLC. your LLT LLT yeah you were saying that LLC I'm sorry yeah uh, yeah I was leasing it back to my LLC and then let, let your LLC put it let your LLC Airbnb it then the money's coming into your LLC anyway and then you file your taxes on it but yeah so right, you can right, still right. yeah you can still because I, I, I'm only holding it for six months the bank I was working with they're like oh you just need to deed the property for six months I mean I had to have mm-hmm. my name on the property for six months then they'll refinance it. So as long as banks still giving money, I think we good for now. Now I'm going to ask you something. I know, I know you have, you're juggling a few things right now, but like, do you ever feel like, okay, this is kind of frozen right here until, until this date, this one's, you know, working on this till this date. And that you feel like you twiddle your thumbs sometimes because these projects are just kind of like playing out, like they're going to play out and you don't feel like you're, um, I don't know. You're, you're hustling enough. You're, you're well, progressing or, or you don't feel like you, you feel like, I mean, you know, some, it just sucks waiting. And then there's, but I mean, is there a way to like make something for you to do? That's going to, yeah, that, that is going to progress you. Not just waiting. Oh, I got to wait till this bank tells me this, you know, refinance. I got to wait till this bank, you know, approves me for this or, you know, or this house is done repaired. How do you keep going? How do you keep the momentum rolling? Learning, reading. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I do. Um, Cause right now I'm waiting on. I have three things pending, but I'm about to cancel one. I got one house under contract. I think I'm backing out. Uh, it's like it was the one with the booty salon. I think I'm backing out of that. And really? then I have the refi on my house going. Then I have the rehab going. And I'm like, man, I got a refi, a rehab, and a refinance. And then I have one. I'm trying to. I got under contract right now, but I'm like, if I get that under contract, my it'll mess up my refinance on my mm-hmm. house. So I was like, man. And plus, the de- it's not really a good deal. I'm not putting – I don't want to put down 20% to get a house right now. And mm-hmm. that's, they, they're actually requiring 25%. I was like, oh, no, I'm good. Who's the house, they? Uh, the bank that I'm using. They okay. were like, well, we'll give you 20 He said, if you put down 25%, you know, we'll give you this better interest rate. And I'm like mm. – I've seen that. They've been telling me that too. I'm like, damn. Why don't you just buy the whole damn house and have a zero interest rate? Yeah. So I was like, forget <laughs> it. I'm going to back out of that deal tomorrow. I was supposed to do it today, but man, we were so tired. Uh, we had some family stuff to take care of, but man, I'm going to back out of that one. And then just focus on the rehab, the rehab and the, cause this is one of, my, one of my first times just really managing a contractor. So might as well learn everything about that. I can, uh, the rehab. And I remember, I ain't never even seen this property. So <laughs> holy the shit. rehab and the refi. So in Arkansas. Yeah. The when do you find out making a, making a trip? Um, I'm supposed to next weekend, next weekend. That'll be our first time going down and actually seeing it, mm-hmm. uh, which will be fun. You know, we've heard the complaints about it so far. Uh, the how complaints. bad it was. Huh? Oh, by the yeah, contractor. No, 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 no. Uh, my, uh, parents are managing it. You know, they're like going to manage the contractor and stuff. I'm paying everything out and they manage it for me. And then once oh, okay. we get it all off the ground, we turn into an Airbnb and hit the ground rolling. So your parents saw it already? 
Yeah, they seen it. They were the ones because I, I sent it to them. They, they, my, they actually sent it to me because I was bidding on another property. And they were like, hey, go check this one out. And we bid it on it and we got it. So, And that, that's really where I've been getting houses from, man. The auction's a hot spot. Nice. It's a hot spot. If you have lines of credit, hard money available, it's a hot spot. So how much um, did you pay for it? And how much rehab are you going to put? And then what's the ARV after resale, after rehab value? 48K is what we paid. We were going to put, I remember last week I told you it was 17,000. Uh-huh. But since it was so, remember, I, I remember I budgeted for 50. So since it came in at 17,000, I was like, we might as well fix it up real, real nice. You know, and uh, I, I, we added a few things. Like he's going to take a wall out, build mm-hmm. a bar in there. And he's going to build a, a patio. He's going to cut a, another wall out and build a patio. And uh, it came out now, the new estimate is 24,000. So, That's not bad. 48k and then 24k rehab so and the arv on it the house next door was just listed at 112 i okay. really projected it for it to be 135 but it listed at 112 and they just sold it i, I, I need to find out what they sold it for i'm pretty sure they pretty um, they sold it for 112 more than likely and you know you refi out of that that brings you about what 90,000 mm. because i'm gonna pull 80 percent out that'll bring me 90,000 and i got it for 48 plus 24 in. Wow. Yeah. So I'm actually making money off the refinance. <laughs> <laughs> so I can't beat that. No, you that's can't. If all goes well. All goes well. Fingers crossed. Yeah, man, that's going to be, that's going to yeah. be cool. Your first burr. Yeah. And I'm, I'm going to put it on a 15 year note. I'm going to pay it off for 15. Okay. Yeah. So f- from now on, anything that's under a hundred grand, I'm going to put it on 15 year notes just to get it out of there, get it done. And have it ready for your kids. Hmm. That's interesting. Interesting. Yeah. So you're no longer a refi till you die kind of guy. No, I'm going to refi, of course. I mean, after 15 years paid off, you're not going to hit it again, pull some more. Oh, you probably know. not. Because I'll still be refining it all the other money, you know. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I probably would. I mean, it'll probably be 15 years. It'll probably be malachized by then. <laughs> you know? Right, right. If he wants it. Yeah, <laughs> that's cool, man. Really, it's not even if he wants it. It's my hire, if we can have a property management company manage it for him, and he just builds up passive income, you know. Okay. Yeah. So, what happens like at the? How does the um the online auction work? The online auction? Oh, it's yeah. legitimate, man. You just uh you, you just have to know a market. You have to know a market. That's the only thing. Um, things that I do. Um get on there. If it says occupied, that's not always the truth. So what I would do, if it says like a place is occupied, just call the city and they'll tell you if it's occupied, just call them and see, call like the electric company and the water company. And, um, I don't, I I try to avoid anything that's occupied right now due to COVID and Oh yeah. Yeah. You don't want to get in no, no, you don't want to get in a space where you have to evict somebody. You really don't. You want to get something that's empty. Um, and not be able to get them out. You can, yeah, you don't want to have to get them out. And then, or you can just go drive by the property and see if a lockbox is on it. More than likely, if it's a lockbox on it, it's vacant. So, That's good advice. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, definitely check out. I'd use auction.com and Hubzoo. Auction.com is where I won my last one. So I, I've been sticking with them. The thing about auction.com, after you win one, they start sending you those emails of, hey, this will be a good deal for you. So yeah, it's been pretty good. Oh, cool. I'm actually, oh, funny thing is, I'm looking at auction.com right now. <laughs> yeah. so. now now what's um what's what it was funny you sent me a text the other day mm-hmm. about oh was it might have been might have been today even but um about about the lack of um a lack of uh what's, what did you call it lack of knowledge people have about finances oh yeah man so why did you why did you send me that text? oh yeah that, that was pretty funny because i was talking about that because so the house i got out the auction these people let their property go into floor closure because they were collecting comic books. And like, you know, it, 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 it's funny, but then it's kind of sad. It's like, dang, man, you would let your whole house go into foreclosure to collect comic books. And um, so funny. So how did you figure that out? How did you know that? So the funny thing is my mom met the lady who used to live there mm. because she saw that we had a, um, we had a big dumpster out there and then we, we were the, uh, contractors they were clearing everything out so they could start the rehab and she ended up running by there and you know and she's like oh just, just i just want one thing you know and uh she's like we just want a few things and 
found out they were just in there collecting comic books because the bank put them out and the bank locked the house and they said, hey, whoever buys the house will give you 30 days to get your stuff out or whatever. So we let her go in there and she just was like, oh yeah, I just needed my comic books. And it was just comic books. Everything was comic books. And uh, my mom got her number. So she went over there a few more times and it was just like, really, you did all this for comic books. But the reason she, my mom talked to her and she literally just went into foreclosure for comic books. Man, that's crazy. But yeah, and I was like, it's like the the other side of America, man. Like you really, sometimes people in, these people make good money. Like this dude, her husband's a manager somewhere. Mm. Like at a trucking company or something. He's like a manager and they just, I don't know, man. It's, it's crazy. Wow. You know, it's, it's like in California where you get those landlords who, uh, they'll rent a place out really high value, their own home. They'll rent it out and they won't pay the mortgage. <laughs> it's like, y'all crazy, man. But, you know, <laughs> now crazy. the, um, you could have been sitting on a gold mine, though. She might have had some Spider Man number ones, some we, Superman number ones. We were <laughs> on Let me tell you, we were sitting on a gold mine. Because my mom called me, she was like, she, she, my brother in law, he's real big on collecting comic books and cards. He's been, he's been kind of following the Gary V model. You know, very, Gary V's been real big into that right now. He's been making some money. Collecting cards and comic books? Yeah, cards. He's been hitting. Like, really? Yeah, cards are starting to pick back up. So, he he had like some of the ones that were over there because they all went and took a look and he just looked them up, man. Some of them comic books were like three hundred bucks. Oh, dude! I was and you like, just gave them to her, dude. My, I, I didn't make the decision. My mom was like, she called me. She was like, I shouldn't have gave that lady those comic books. She was, I was like, what? She was like, some of them things was like three hundred a pop. So if she walked out with boxes of comic books. Let's say you had five boxes, all of them three. It's at least twenty. Probably fifty to a hundred comic books in all of them. Wow. They could have paid their mortgage though. <laughs> God, but yeah. Uh, well, I was like, you know. what? But yeah, they they looked. They were like, yeah. Some of the comics was like, she was like, my mom was like, I was just being nice. I was like, yeah, I know how oh, that is. Maybe you get some good karma out of it, you know? Yeah, you know, we 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 wasn't planning on making money out of comic books. That would have been a bonus, but you know. Wouldn't that be some shit? He's find like a hundred thousand dollar comic book in there. It'd be <laughs> the best rehab ever, ever. would be to come close <laughs> that would have been that, that really would have took the cake that you would have been on bigger pockets played for the paid the rehab you would have been on bigger pockets the best rehab <laughs> the best burr ever for <laughs> all my money and then some for real the whole house i bought got paid for by comic books found a hannes wagner card now nah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it was um, crazy though we were talking about yeah because that's what i text you i was like man that is crazy people do that though you know yeah so investing out of state that's what a lot of people i mean because right now i told mm -hmm. you how i've been you know things have been going and dfw's been blazing hot dude like i said piece of crap house is going for way too much mm -hmm. and um so you're you're comfortable with investing out of state you got your team over there i got my team and i, I just know the market I'm not like this, like, like one place I want to invest, but I'm not comfortable because I don't have the boots on the ground is Memphis. Memphis is one place that's fairly cheap and really good Airbnb, but I don't, I don't know the market like that, but like Memphis is a place I'll go to. I, um, I probably need to fly out there just to get a feel of the market, meet with some investors. Really? I even got to fly out there. I can get on bigger pockets, you know? Use it for oh, okay. what it's worth, you know, network with some people out there. But I haven't got real, real comfortable with that yet without having boots on the ground. Right, right. Yeah, Memphis is pretty cheap, but I always hear some crazy crime stories over there. Yeah, there's crime stories everywhere. You just got to know what areas to go. Like, I know if I was to go to Memphis, I'd probably go to Germantown. Like, right north. I think that's like the northern area. I got to look. But yeah, Germantown's a real nice area. Okay. So the, the refi process, that's taking a long time. Well, yeah, actually, you're right. For this place, yeah, it is. I'm happy you brought that up. Yeah, it is taking a long time. I think 90 days, that's pretty long. Holy shit. Yeah. I wonder why it's taking so long. I think people are just slow right now. I think people are just slow right now. I think that's what it is. Like, And even if you look at, like, they, now, the place that I was going to buy, they was talking about they want to close on the 22nd. I'm like, damn. That was quick. <laughs> but, so 
so why did the okay the the house that came with the beauty salon att- attached to it? Why why did you um pull out of that one? I don't want to put down. I don't want to put down that much money. I want to have be able to get my money back like that, like six months, have my money back. You know. Oh okay. You know, and I just so it like, tied you up. Yeah, I mean, but it was was it a great deal then? I don't know if it was a great deal. I mean, if you're paying twenty, you're putting twenty four thousand down. No, I wouldn't say it's a good deal. Not right now. Okay. Because I'm, it's one nineteen. You get a beauty shop in the back. You get a three bedroom house. The cash flow might be there, but you're putting down twenty four thousand. I'm like, man, I ain't got to <laughs> put. I can put that in so many other places. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I can get that back like that if I burn it. You know? Right, right. Like, well, send it. Send at the it. auction. Twenty four thousand might be a whole house. Damn. Yeah, I need to get on that auction thing. <laughs> yeah, go ahead though. But send me send me that house if you don't mind. Oh, you want it? Yeah, I'll take it. I mean, I'll look at it. Matter of fact, if you get it, I, I, I because man, I hate I hate to call this. I mean, you sometimes you got to do business is business. Um, might just send it to you. But business. Matter of fact, you type it in fourteen. I don't want to say it in the podcast. <laughs> yeah, don't say it on the podcast. <laughs> uh, just, but just yeah, text I'll, I'll it let to you me. take a look at it. I'll hook you up with the realtor too. Matter of fact, I, after I back out, I'd be like, look, my boy Steve interested. And um, I got boots on the ground down there that would, uh, you know, if you wanted to Airbnb it, they would do it for you. They would take care of it for you. Oh, got cool. a hell of a cleaning staff. Like, my cleaning staff's off the chain. Like, we five stars every time. And even if you got, like, um, uh, someone to rent the, the beauty side of it, too, you said? Yeah, I got somebody to rent that, too. Okay. Yeah, send, send it my way, man. Okay. You don't yeah, mind. Yeah, yeah. Man, I'm happy you said that. Yeah. I'm networking, man. <laughs> Teamwork make the dream work. LLT. Yeah. My yeah. wife's all about the beauty scene. She'll want to fly over there and pretty it up and all that kind of stuff, probably. Oh, yeah. It's probably going to be turnkey, too. Like, the only, she already sold a few items. I talked to her today. She sold a few items. She had a vending machine in there. That's not wanted. But she, she, uh, she had already sold it. But yeah, uh, I'll shoot it to you. Yeah, yeah. Be sure to text it to me. Yeah, yeah, that's a that's be a, exciting, that actually man. will be a good one for you because they'll. I mean, you you're probably gonna have to pay for the furniture and stuff, but like they will, my team would set it up for you. Oh, cool. Yeah, if you want it, they ready to go, and it's already updated. The whole house is updated. Hell yeah, I'm down for that. Yeah, yeah, I got a realtor for you. I got the whole team on deck for you. I got you. <laughs> and that'll be part of the Airbnb experiences too. I'll throw hey next door for a little bit more. Get your hair did. <laughs> for real uh yeah because i was gonna yeah i was gonna uh, i was gonna rent it out by booth but then i was like nah i just rent it out to a uh, beauty a beautician and let her rent the booths out so just give me a flat. you know i gonna be calling kim and am i already talked to him about it <laughs> yeah because i told uh kim the other day because i was out of part of i gave i did a speech for her one of her groups on zoom really yeah it was like 35 50 people on there i did a speech for one of them for you know her groups and uh yeah i told her i was like man i got a house under contract and i was like only reason i was really comfortable moving forward because i was like i know i could call y'all because the beauty salon i was like i don't know nothing about it so (laughs) yeah Yeah, man i can't wait i can't wait to see it oh yeah it's 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 pretty it's a dope house my i haven't seen it my people seen it so it's a dope house (laughs) (laughs) no, no. <laughs> <laughs> can't be saying that forgot wait a minute wait a minute <laughs> <laughs> the um dope man, but yeah. the dope man. Uh, what was i gonna say um the art of negotiations real quick i'll talk about mm-hmm. that you know it's funny because because i went um i'm on vacation this week i'm on vacation okay. this week yeah so i'm doing a little staycation thing you know everything's shutting back down again like whatever I need but to I, go ahead. Yeah, and you get a lot done. Yeah, you, well, you think you do, but um. So I signed up the, down the road right here in Hearst. There's a little um a little gym. It's like a ten dollar a month kind of thing, mm-hmm. and um. So I had talked to them on the phone. Of course, they do this forty dollars to start, and then ten bucks, and all that stuff. And so I was at Walmart because right next to the Walmart. I went there and said, you know what? I'm a art of negotiations. I'm gonna go talk to them, see what's up. Mm-hmm. I told them, hey, if I sign up today could you waive that $40 fee? Cause for the, for, if you wanted the $30 a month one that covers all the gyms, not just one of the one gym, whatever I want the 10 bucks a month. And he said, um, well, you know, that one we'll waive it on that one. I said, oh, well, 
I'm signing up right now, man. If you give me something and boom, 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 he gets on the computer and all this shit. It's like, okay. Yeah. We're able to waive the fee and we can start you today. It's like, all right. That's what I'm talking about. And so I'm just saying people are just too afraid to ask for things, you know, and yeah. nine out of, I don't know about nine out of 10 times, nine out of 10 times you get something, mm-hmm. you know, always ask, right. Always ask for some kind of discount or deal. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Don't be afraid to offend people. Four hour work week talks about that. Yeah. Yeah. Asking for you. Just ask. Yeah. You might get a no, but you know. Does he mention the Starbucks test, the Starbucks thing? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I talked about Yeah. <laughs> I tried that once and I got it. I got 10% off. Yeah. The Starbucks. Yeah. yeah. I mean, just getting, get comfortable doing that and then you, it becomes a part of you. You know, it's just repetition. Repetition. Right. Right. Yeah. But yeah, that, that's a, that was, I like that theory of how he was doing that, you know, just ask, you know, that's, for, it's a no, it's a no. Cause right exactly. now I'm like, uh, I see, and I'm not really good at negotiating. Uh, I'll have a set price in my mind. And if it goes above that, I'm done. You know what I mean? That's how I always am. Like, that's why I like the auction. So I, I, I knew, Hey, I ain't going above 50,000. You got it for right. 48, you know, and you can set that price in your mind, you know? <laughs> And by the way, the good thing on those auctions is what you really want to do is wait till like it's four, three minutes left on the auction, then start bidding. Really? Yeah, yeah. You gotta <laughs> do that. That old eBay trick, wait till it's at the very last minute, and then you start bidding when there ain't too many people. You know, people, it might be ending at three o'clock in the afternoon and people are at work, so they can't bid, you know, things like that. Now, now I don't know if that still exists, but they're talking about back in the eBay days that people had some software would automatically, you know, oh, yeah. be the very last one to, to bid, you know, five bucks above everybody else kind of thing. Facts. That still exists. Yeah. Especially it, now with like things like Zapier, you can, you can automate anything now. And that's actually a good idea. I need to look into doing that. <laughs> you can win yeah. all the auctions, man. Yeah. But then you can just pick and choose which houses you want. You don't have to, Correct. you won't be locked up in all of them. Right. Mm-hmm. Plus oh, it costs okay. like to bid, it costs 2,500. It costs twenty five hundred, and if you don't get the house, you get the money back. So it puts a twenty five hundred hold on, dollar hold on your credit card. That's what use a credit card. Don't use your debit because it'll take it out. But credit card oh. just holds it and then puts it back. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah. So I ain't never spent any money, you know. And then and then the twenty five hundred, if you win, it goes towards the earnest money. So it's cool. Cool. Man. Cool. Yeah, I sent you one too. I keep reading stories about people using that PPP for. <laughs> For doing stupid shit, man. We're people are getting popped. On people. people are getting popped, man. Yeah. Some day, the story I sent you was a guy. He said uh, he was he needed it to keep his barbecue place running, mm-hmm. and then they they found out he didn't have a barbecue spot. He didn't buy any barbecue. He didn't he didn't have any employees. He got a million dollars from the government. I'm like, really? A fucking million a million dollars? And he went and started a, a a coin account. You know, buying Bitcoin and all these other coins. And then he said, well. That's how I pay my pay my employees. He don't have any employees on the books. And he even got and it said it didn't say the other amount. He got another amount for this other business that he just made up out of the blue. But they're just sending people money, dude. And they think they're gonna get away with this shit, man. I already knew, and that's why I, the <laughs> videos I made were for that exact reason. Cause I knew people were gonna be BSing and fudging and making up stuff and you know. Um, but yeah, your tax return is gonna save your ass on whatever they send you, you know what I mean? So yeah, oh, be yeah. careful with that that uh cuz PPP yeah. money. I didn't get the PPP. I just got the SBA. Oh, okay. I didn't even want the PPP. I was like just give me the SBA money. So I got the grant and then I got the loan. So oh, Okay. Cuz I think like this is what people figure, wow, there's so many of us doing it. They're going to catch all of us. But what the IRS will do, they'll send you, you know, they have their automated shit too. They'll send you a bill. Hey, you owe us, you know, $100,000. You got to then... connect that to an EIN <laughs> or a social, man. They know where that money going. <laughs> They might right. be careless with it and freely, freely giving it away, but you know. Yeah, they're gonna get theirs back. They're gonna try to fill the coffers back up, man, one way or another. Yeah. But I just thought, man, there's some people doing some shady shit. It's all right, man. And, and, oh. Yeah, I already knew that was gonna happen, man. I've been telling people, man, don't go to jail over these SBAs and PPPs. You know, it's that's what the, that that's Fed time. Right, right, right. You might um, get a nice hot and hot three hots and a cot in the fish. Right? <laughs> Did you say cot or something else? Three hots and a cot. <laughs> and fed, you know, they, they said fed time. I don't know. You said some people Ooh, said it's easy. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. Um the house I was I was 
you know, it's funny. This house that I, I was trying to get in Grand Prairie, and um, I was I was messaging the the other uh, agent, and and she she keeps saying, "Well, she's supposed to close. They're supposed to close last week, but they're waiting on some kind of form or something." But then they're supposed to close this week, and I still see the thing pending. I'm like, I mean, whatever. If these if you're gonna just let <laughs> if you're just gonna let these buyers just keep dragging you and dragging you like this, man, that's that's on you. Mm-hmm. But um, here's what I you know the price I'll pay this and that if if they do if y'all want to back out with them or just say hey y'all y'all you know you already missed the date three or four times already you know we need to sell this house because the lady that's going to sell it she wants to build her a house so she can't do nothing until she gets things things sold i just don't understand i think the agent's young and she don't know what the hell she's doing you know there's a lot of that going on yeah. so i'm like i mean i'd be like man if you ain't gonna close my screw you i got like three or four other people want to buy this house hmm. it just it's just weird it's just a weird situation it might be a situation where maybe things are slowing down. Um, Possibly. Like, uh, I don't know though. Oh, as far as no, nah, I, I look at houses. I look at this area every day. I don't, man, these houses go fast. If it's halfway decent, it's gone, man. It gets like 20 bids and shit. I mean, it's just crazy. The market's crazy right now over here. Really? Yeah. I need to now, put my shit up for sale. <laughs> I, <laughs> I guess the only, yeah I, keep, yeah, I think that too. But I guess the only thing that, um, because a lot of people are unemployed, right? Yeah. It keeps them, I mean, you can't be unemployed and buy a house. So I, that keeps them out of the market. But I guess the rest of us who are just, or still have to work, you know what I'm saying? We're not getting that free money. We got to, I mean, at least we at least we can still buy homes, you know, because yeah. we got a W-2. See, and I, I think people should take this time to learn like a hustle where they could, you know, a hustle where you can, you know, create income for yourself and make it taxable so you can you know show that you have other income coming in definitely take that time because right now man you see the dot jobs just letting people go you know it's it's a risk i've been on tiktok and i've been watching so many people post different side hustles that are out there mm-hmm. you know so yeah mm. man <laughs> it's it's funny because um uh, Trump and his boys are threatening to shut down TikTok, man. There'd be a lot of pissed off mofos in this country. Because really? <laughs> it's a like Chinese company. It's a Chinese app company. Really? And so they're saying, of course, that, you know, they're worried about people stealing people's data and all this mm-hmm. stuff, you know. And so I think it's just to stick it to China myself. But, <laughs> man, yeah, he's... <laughs> oh, man. And then, and then someone came up with a theory that that these they call them tweens or teens or tweens whatever they you know a lot of them hate trump so they sent out they sent out a thing on tiktok to go for everybody to snap up all the tickets that for the tulsa rally he did some rally in tulsa and they wow. did a thing where everybody go online and buy these or not buy these you know they're free just yeah. sign up for these tickets and so when he did his rally there it was like a half empty little stadium or whatever because mm-hmm. people had locked up all these tickets and they're saying that you know it was tiktokers doing this shit so TikTok i think uh, wow. he might he might be pissed off at tiktok <laughs> making him look bad man it's, it's a cool i've been on it i've been on it real tough with the live let thrive account by the way i follow up follow live let thrive on tiktok um i've been on it real tough and i've seen like how powerful it is man like i, I followed like all the real estate people on there the people doing short-term rentals it is a very very good place to to advertise what you have, like, like on the short term rental space side to advertise what you have and not only advertise it, you can create a link on there where you could pe- send people directly to your website, you know? So it's, it's TikTok, and, it, and you get followers so fast, man. It's crazy. I got people see people get a million followers quick. You know what I mean? It's crazy. Damn. Yeah. TikTok's crazy. TikTok millionaires, huh? Yeah, I mean, million followers and just go from there. You know what I mean? So definitely check out TikTok, man. TikTok's the truth. So they're taking over Facebook and... Um, well, I mean, Facebook's, Facebook's a little different. Facebook's a different crowd. TikTok's biggest... And it's not even really a competition because of how it's set up. It would be Instagram, but TikTok lets you post everything to Instagram. So, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, Facebook hmm. need to buy TikTok. They probably will. Huh? I think they tried before and they they pulled out. They, they tried to it? they tried to buy the company that owns TikTok. I don't I don't know what happened. The negotiations broke down or some shit. Well, but they could have they could have had them. 
<laughs> they, they now they, I will say they they kill an Instagram because it's more organic reach. The people that you reach are the people that you want it in front of. While Instagram, you have to force it by following different hashtags. Um, yeah, like Mahogany knows how to build up an Instagram account, like with engagement stuff like that. With TikTok, you just put the hashtag in and go. Like the really? LLT hashtag had a bunch of followers. I don't know what LLT is besides Live Let Thrive, but. Had a bunch of views, <laughs> I don't, and I was trying to think of what it was. I did. I I, I should have googled it, but I didn't Google it. But yeah, LLT stands for something somewhere. Hmm, that's interesting. Oh well, you know, <laughs> we left a little cliffhanger last time. It's funny because you didn't know what happened, but I heard it that day, and I was like, "What's up with Will and Jada Smith?" <laughs> <laughs> that's craziness. But you you said something. I saw you put something. They you know they kind of took us for a ride, kind of thing. They kind of they kind of they kind of played us or whatever. Yeah, yeah, that's craziness right there, man. But yeah, but that's different, 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 different something else going on over there. <laughs> Just but yeah, man. They got their open Hollywood thing going on. I don't know. Whatever works. Because <laughs> I was like, "Hey, man, what happened to Will and Jay?" You're like, "Huh? What happened?" I was like, "Oh, okay, he ain't heard yet." Oh yeah. Then, then the whole world, man, went off on him and shit. It was crazy. <laughs> she got entangled with the dude. That's that <laughs> sounds painful. Painful. Uh, <laughs> oh man. So um, so you got any other avenues? Any other ventures going on besides just the real estate? Uh, no, I'm gonna start um doing online classes well not online classes i guess like a little on our live let thrive youtube i'm gonna start putting up different stuff of what i'm working on and how i'm working on it and how i'm doing it so other people can learn and do it too you know like the burr how i pull how i'm pulling it off i'll make a little i'm making a video i got my uh whiteboard coming in so once my whiteboard's in i got my light i'll uh i'll be posting some stuff on more stuff on our youtube channel you know people seem to love those how-to videos especially with the sbas and all that you know, oh, nice. I, I guess I think the SBA shut down again. So the PPP. So. Oh really? Everybody lost lost out on if you ain't signed up, lost out on that money. But mm. yeah, that, that money's good money because it's like three point seven five percent interest at thirty years. You can't beat it. But there's rules with it. You can't do stuff with it. You can't expand your business, but you can um, pay off business debt, pay employees, day to day operations. Oh okay. Yes, yeah, so, I mean you could still, you know, what I mean you. Could, you could wiggle room for some stuff. So nice, nice. Yeah. So man, it was a good time. Those two years. These how long? You, how long we've we been doing this podcast? Since twenty seventeen or twenty eighteen? I think it's seventeen. Twenty seventeen. I think it was twenty seventeen. When did you live in Hearst last? Probably twenty sixteen. I lived oh, in Hearst. 16. Wait a minute. Seventeen. Might have been seventeen then. So 18. all of our fans should have been build, building up their business credit. <laughs> we've been telling them about it yeah we, we yeah. came a long way from doing the podcast we were doing it in your house did it in yeah. your second house we did one a couple episodes in your third one so yeah so in that time you bought what one house a year yeah pretty much about one house a year well i got four houses right now so every couple Dude. i think we were at navajo for a couple years it might have been there a couple years and then we bounced to this long, one though. not too long no yeah, you got in and got out. Yeah, you got my, in. My, yeah, my wife is getting tired of moving, so she said we can't move anymore. Really? <laughs> yeah, because yeah, y'all got that pool now, right? We got the pool, man. Yeah, so it's yeah. helping with the COVID, right? So we, I mean, yeah. a lot of it's funny because they say they're building pools left and right now because it's been two neighbors just got pools. Jeez. Yeah. So we got. Yeah, two neighbors just got pools, and then everyone else, if they can't fit a pool in their backyard, they're putting up patios. Okay, so the, the chill spot, you know. Yeah, just to get outside, man. I need to start yeah. getting outside some more too, because man, it's just like it seems like sometimes you're just stuck in the house. You know what I mean? You're like, dang, oh, really, really can't go nowhere. So. And then it's a hundred degrees outside. <laughs> it's been scorching, ain't it? It's been scorching. It's been terrible, man. Yeah, and then like all your ace. Then my that's one issue I've been having at one of my places, one of my uh, short term rentals, is the AC. Um, but it wasn't the AC; it's the damn um. Those smart settings, when you have those smart thermostats, mm -hmm. if, like if they don't, you know, if nobody walks by the AC unit or by the thermostat, it just turns off the unit. So like <laughs> if it's in between guests, 
I'll have a guest check in and it's 80 degrees in the house, man. They're like, dude, I can't, you know, I'm like, Damn. <laughs> so I have to change those settings for people that have smart thermostats. If you're already going through this, or if you're a new host, turn that crap off, and, you know, just set it to a certain place where it's going to, you know, be energy efficient for you. Oh, okay. That's a good tip right there. Yeah, because it's been, man, these scorching days, man. It, it kills the AC, but I, I got a brand new unit on this house, so. Oh, okay. Yeah, you did that this year, right? Mm-hmm. Right, yeah, you paid, right when quarantine happened. You paid some money on your house this year. Yeah, I put. I actually got some more money I'm putting into it because I'm getting a new patio door, the ones with the screen, the blinds in between them. I'm getting that. Yeah. And I got a guy, actually, I got a guy in DFW that's doing some real good work for cheap prices, man. If y'all need any work done around your house in the DFW, hit me up. Me, my guy, I'll give my guy a big pat on it. So mm. check it out. You know, you know, I was thinking there's probably a lot of contractors out there that are, that are doing off the books work, you know, because, because, because this COVID thing let a lot of people that independent contractors claim um, unemployment. So again, unemployment money, getting 600 a week on top of that. Plus, they, I mean, they're independent contractor. Who the hell, who's going to follow them all day? Know that they're still going to get jobs. Exactly. <laughs> Cashing in three ways, man. Hey, I'm telling people, man, if you want something done to your house, man, I've, I've told, said people this since the beginning of quarantine, what, four months ago? If you want something done to your house, do it. Get it done. Like, you can really, you know, make some, get some stuff done for cheap. You know, I'm getting yeah. new walls in. I'm getting this wall behind me fixed. I'm getting everything fixed up and I'm getting a new patio back there, a new patio door. Yeah. Get whatever done you want done. I looked into those studio sheds again. Um, we had our guy, Zach Meadows on um, the, uh, what was it called on the mastermind? And he built a studio shed in his backyard and he, but he lives in the studio shed and rents out his house. So <laughs> Damn. Yeah. When you're single. You can do that type of stuff. So I was like, man, I looked in one of them to put in my backyard. So, now what i've seen a few which one was that how much was that one to put in his said he cost his cost 15 grand but the ones i'm looking at costing 25 grand oh damn yeah the bathroom and everything yeah it's like it's like a little house Mm -hmm. like a little i think 200 something square foot house it's like a tiny home put it in your backyard i gotta i just gotta make sure i can get one built no, you got to talk to the city, freaking Arlington. I know, freaking Arlington. Man. I told you before, I, I called them because I was going to do that at the house. So, you know, one down the stadium, by mm-hmm. the stadium. And I called them. Well, let's go. They said, well, it's going to be a thousand dollars fee just to um, get us to go, you know, see, you know, see if you can do it, you know, put in the paperwork and all that. It's a thousand dollars fee. Mm-hmm. He goes, I said, okay. And how long does it usually take? Oh, it could take, you know, up to six months before we approve you. And I was like, oh, damn. I said, well, what happens if after six months, then I don't get approved for it? And um, they said, well, I said, I'll get my money back. I said, no, that's, that's, that fee's gone. You don't get your money back. I was like, God damn. <laughs> Fucking Arlington, dude. I know, man. Arlington, man. I, oh. Know. Every time. It's like I look on the map and I you know, have my agent out there looking at houses. And I'm like, she always sends me an Arlington. And I was like, no, nah, I don't care how good it looks, man. Arlington's just not friendly for us people, for oh, us investors, man. man. Dude, I don't know why they just want to keep it hood. I guess you know certain parts. Yeah, the north, they just want to. South. Well, the middle, right in the middle, right? Like right, yeah. yeah, Central Arlington, like North Arlington's the entertainment district. The south side is the uh, like the suburb suburban area. Then you have the middle, all hell breaking loose. You got the GM <laughs> plant. You got for real, man. Like they just, yeah. I don't know what 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 the, what's up with Arlington, man. That should be their slogan: Arlington, keep it hood. For real, the middle of yeah, Central Arlington, that's what they do with it, man. <laughs> they don't want nothing coming up in here. God, I don't get it. Dang. I don't get it either, man. So I was trying to, yeah, I'm, I'm still thinking about getting that house built. I'm going to look and keep looking into it. See, uh, see, Grand Prairie's hood, but they're business friendly hood. <laughs> see, Grand Prairie's like a different type of hood. Like Grand Prairie, you got the hood on the north, and then on the south, you got the, that's where the football players live. It's like, damn. like Yeah, you got some nice areas. Wow. Yeah. Like South Grand Prairie is like, like that's the biggest wealth gap of a city I've ever seen. Like I'm for real. Like <laughs> North Arlen, North Grand Prairie, you got the hood, and you go to the South Grand Prairie, it looks like the Taj Mahal of houses down there. You like, uh, damn. Yeah. Yes, South Grand Prairie, man. I'm talking no a football player. Like I know Michael Crabtree lives over there. Um, uh, Jerry Rice has a house over there, I believe. Jerry Rice, whoa. <laughs> South Arlington, man, like going right into uh, Cedar Hill, man. 
It's crazy. Yeah, Dion lived out there, right? Yeah. Cedar Hill. Is he? His kids went to school in Cedar Hill. Probably did. Yeah. Yeah, it's nice out there. Cedar Hill. Cedar Hill and uh, South Grand Prairie is nice. Hmm. Yeah, if you uh want the nice area of the uh, Grand Prairie, go to the south side. Right, right. But if you're looking at uh, Airbnb, you might watch out for those HOAs, though. Are you running to a lot of HOAs in uh, Grand Prairie? Well, not where I'm looking. But the the, the nicer areas have HOAs. Yes, so. because I haven't. I ain't ran into HOA issues in Grand Prairie ever. Ever. Yeah, I ain't really hit too many. Um, no, I did when I was looking for arbitrage. They was like, yeah, it's an HOA neighborhood, but you couldn't tell. Like, you know. It seemed like they were pretty lax, but I'm pretty sure if you started Airbnb and somebody would complain about it. Yep. There's always some Karens out there. Yep. (laughs) No, where I would look at, if I was looking in Grand Prairie, look somewhere off 30 or like where 30 and PGBT hit. I would look somewhere up there. Yeah. They're also building that really, really big um, apartment complex out in Grand Prairie called Southfield, I think. It's like really nice apartments out there, like three levels, and then like you gotta, you get the roundabout balcony if you get it. It's mm-hmm. pretty nice. Now, um, Chris, I believe it was Chris. Uh, bad with names. The twenty-seven-year-old millionaire that was on our show. Yeah, I remember? Baldwin. Yeah, Baldwin. There you go, Chris Baldwin. I, I started because yeah, Chris Baldwin, and he, um, you know, he's got his little. He's got a yeah. Check out his YouTube channel, Chris Baldwin. Uh, young millionaire, great and very inspiring story. Check out our our episode on him. Um, but he he, I guess he's starting to do guests, have guests on his show now on his YouTube channel. He's straight YouTube. He don't have a podcast or none. He's just straight YouTube. Mm-hmm. And um, this guy, I, I I just started watching part of it today. But this guy, he has this guy on who um, who makes one hundred and fifty thousand dollars a month in rental income, and. <laughs> that's what it that's what it was well, the interesting part on that one on that episode and we don't and and kind of like it's got to be beat, beat, beaten into us from like uh, oh buy and hold forever hold on to your stuff forever blah blah he's like well you know you can't always think that way because he said he gave for example he started investing in 2003 he said well when in um my i bought this house for like 150,000 and like a couple years later it was worth 260,000 so he's like he's like well I, man, it's worth a lot of money. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna cash out and I'm a 1031 exchange it into something else. Cause he saw like a fourplex Then he just kept doing that. Cause he just sold it when the prices were good. And he, he, he's ended up with like these, um, like a 40 unit apartment and other, you know, big ass apartments. And he just, just, you know, sold when the prices are right. And there's nothing wrong with that. Pulling your chips off the table when it's, when it's a good time to do it. Right. And he said, follow the old monopoly, man, get four houses, get a hotel. A, that's what he said it's like playing real monopoly straight up and um and he said people get attached and said no i'll never sell my rentals i'll never sell my rentals he goes and then he goes if i would have thought like that i would have just been here sitting here today with with six rental properties mm-hmm. which ain't bad but it ain't one hundred fifty thousand dollars a month in rental income <laughs> exactly, bro. people so, don't realize that man yeah you gotta yeah. Uh, that actually inspires me to look into doing a 1031 take the right. out of this and get a multifamily. Yeah. Straight up. What if you pulled the equity out of the house you live in, got a multifamily, now you're living for free. Then you get your multifamily, they give you loans off the money coming in. You Woo. Man, thanks for that. I'm happy we talked about that. Now me and now I got something to do. See? I forward you that episode. It's pretty good. This guy's really good, man. I seen I'm it. Gonna... I seen a bit I seen the title to it. I ain't watch it though. Oh, okay. But yeah, yeah, 1031 exchange to a multifamily, that'd be now, now I need to know to go look at multifamilies. Put that on my to do list, <laughs> and it makes sense. I mean, put all your. It's a lot easier to take care of. You know, they're all under one roof. So it's all easier, to, a lot easier to take care of, man. And then you can live in one, and you know, cut your own living expenses. There you go. Yeah, think big, right? Yeah, for real, man. Ten thirty one exchange, multifamily. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna call that the monopoly theory. I like the that. monopoly theory. <laughs> yeah, man. People, I mean, it's like, yeah. There's if you see an angle, take it, right? Because, mm-hmm. yeah. I, I mean, I got good renters right now, but I wouldn't mind. I mean, looking into. I mean, they're my properties, right? I could sell them if I want. Yeah. You know, I could. I could. 
make the most, I guess the, what do they say? Highest and best use of something, right? Yeah. The highest and best use of something. If I could, I even thought about this cause I, you remember how, how Kim and Am, I still get properties sent to me from Indianapolis and I like, mm-hmm. you know, duplexes and on duplexes, triplexes, stuff like that for cheap. But I think, man, a regular house here costs more than that. I could sell one of my regular houses and buy into one of that and get three, you know, th- two or three units right away. You know really? what I'm saying? I don't know about Arkansas if there's opportunities like that in Arkansas, but um. Oh yeah, in Arkansas, what what do you mean if you were to take get a duplex? Equity? Yeah, oh, all day, but they gonna be in the hood though. Oh yeah, the hood hood. <laughs> yeah, like, ain't, like you going if you get a multifamily in Arkan Little Rock, man, you going to the jungle. <laughs> straight up, man, you going to you going to the trap, man. <laughs> straight up, man. I'm telling trap. you that now. You. You go into the trap. We buy trap houses. You know, <laughs> hey, you know, it, it's money in it. Like, if if I were, honestly though, but if I were to go multifamily in a market like Little Rock, I would put them all on Section Eight. I would, oh I would man, Section 8 them. guaranteed income. Yeah, I would Section Eight them just because it's. I would Section Eight them and put a property management company on them and let them handle all that. So you ain't, you ain't handling that. That's great advice. Great advice, man. Yeah, I, I definitely sectionated, but yeah, let's see. Now, now I have a question for you. How much equity do you have? Do you think you have in all your rentals? Oh, that's a good one, man. I have to do some just real quick math off the top of my head. Probably got man, eighty, eighty and one. Let me see. Earn a fifty. Uh, Earn a fifty. Let me see. Ten, twenty, three, forty, fifty. That's looking nice already. Yeah, one eighty, close to two hundred, maybe. Two hundred. Yeah, that's so, not counting this house we live in. Okay. Apparently, it's gone up a few, a couple twenty G since we got it, but you know. So let's think about it like this: If you were to ten thirty one exchange all your houses for. One multifamily, do you realize you probably could do it? Damn, yeah. That's <laughs> how so you have to look at it, man. That's how you have to look at it, like damn. Because like, you said you have how many fat houses do you have right now? Four. Four houses, yeah. Yeah, that's when you can get a. That's when you can get a hotel in Monopoly once you hit four. Man, this is the nice. This is the perfect time to sell too. Man, dude, 1031 exchange, four houses, man, you do, man, you, you'd be, dude, that, that would push you to the next level. If you were to 1031 exchange all your properties, got like a, if you were to get like a man, a 20, with that much, you can get like a 30 unit in Bali, even more. Oh, you're talking about like a down payment and then finance the rest. Finance the rest. Move oh, yeah, you always use leverage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, move into one of them. Uh, like a three two like a one of them a nice one with a three two somewhere shit i'd move into one of them stack bread i ain't paying nothing (laughs) i'm chilling man god dang why didn't we start this when we were single (laughs) better to start now you got your legacy no it's it's yeah it's there's always different stages in life right yeah i mean you know because if i if i was to do that right now i think i'm gonna see how much equity i have i think i have Twenty, and then oh, I got about two hundred k, two hundred two fifty, probably close to three. Oh, I didn't even count the new house. It's probably close to three hundred. So if I was to take that equity, do a ten thirty one. See now, now, now I'm tempted to get on LoopNet, man. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, I ain't thinking that. Just do a ten thirty one. I might do that in December. Instead of doing a refi, just do a 1031 on everything. Even your house. Yeah. Move oh, into man. a multifamily. Move into like a, a, a move into a, a 20 unit. The thing is, December is not a good time to sell. You know, right before Christmas and all that. That's true. I, can, I, I mean, my whole point is 
when December hits, that's when I can refinance. I really could just refinance in December, pull mm-hmm. the cash out, don't because you don't pay taxes on it anyway, and then still, you know, just let the cash sit, and then do the ten thirty one. Well, mahogany, I just made our retirement plan. <laughs> Episode one thirty one. <laughs> Dang, I didn't think of that. Yeah, you could do a ten thirty one. Uh, yeah, jump up to the big places. Yeah, start kicking with the big boy, you know. <laughs> Grant Cardone's, right? For real, 10X that shit. <laughs> <laughs> he don't want no damn single families. He, he might, he, uh, I don't think, he, uh, I don't agree with his theory on single families, but I see what he's saying. I, I, I understand what he's talking about, though. You know what I mean? Mm. I, I like yeah. single families, but I, I, I've always, y'all know I've always been into multifamilies. And damn it, I think I just found my way in. There you go, man. Yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I'm about to look into that. I'm about to look into ways to do like a multi, multi, multi multiple house. My parents did it, though. They did it. They, they did a 1031 exchange with one of their duplexes in their main house and then exchanged it for multiple properties instead of, you know. Instead of an apartment or something? Yeah, they exchanged theirs for like, they exchanged two for... I want to say three houses, three single families. Oh. Okay. Yeah, I think I'm about to hop into that, man. That, that might be the thing to do. <laughs> yeah, of course, you're going to Airbnb all of them, I'm sure. Or most well, of actually, them. I, I probably like with the, um, like, let's say I had a 20 unit apartment complex. I would rent everything out to cover costs. And then all the extra ones, I would literally lease them to my LLC, then Airbnb, and then I'd probably live in one. You know, that would be pretty dope to do. Hmm. See, now I'm about to look around Dallas to do a, you know, do a 1031. There you go. Man. So I love LLT, man. You always get some good ideas. Off this stuff. <laughs> Just, yeah, go brainstorming. Yeah, yeah. Brainstorming, you know, that, that always helps. Hell yeah. That might be my retirement plan right there. You know, 1031 it all off. And then, then you can just focus on hustling, you know, get four while you're living in your, your uh, 20 unit, get four more houses and do it again. I like it. I like it. Yeah, man. The velocity of money. I love it. For real. That's how the rich get richer. Straight up. That's how the rich get richer. <laughs> and the poor get poor by buying comic books. There's <laughs> <laughs> some ex- there's some expensive comic books. Yeah, they're expensive, but uh, she wasn't paying her. Oh, man, I hate that for him, but damn. Well, man, it's a good little app, you know, a little spur of the moment app. We learned some things. Yeah, that was a good app. Yeah, we talked about 1031s. We talked about uh, Burr strategy. Negotiating. Leasing, yeah, negotiating, leasing your places back to your LLCs. Yeah, that was a good, this was a good episode. Cool, Again. cool. And I might, I might have me a house with a salon in the back. Oh, yeah. There you go. See, we even, I even sold off Steve a house. Get, put a house in Steve's hands. Matter of fact, <laughs> I'll call my realtor now. And I'll, I'm going to send it to you after this episode, and I'm going to call my realtor. Awesome, man. Appreciate yeah. it. All right, y'all, man. Thank y'all for listening to us. Um, this is episode 131. Remember to follow us on Instagram, TikTok. I'm heavy on it now. Instagram, TikTok, at Live, Let, Thrive. And um, by the way, if you're looking to have getting help, get matter of fact, since you're in the house, you ain't got nothing else to do. You need to go ahead and get in shape. So when you go back to work, you're not looking like the blob. Uh, go ahead and get in shape. Call up Mahogany. Get on Mahogany Artist. Follow Mahogany Artist at IG. And she will get your health and fitness game on point. And we are out. Later. Peace. Thank you for tuning in to this week's episode of Live, Let, Thrive. Be sure to tune in next week for all the latest in the world of Airbnb and all that entails. Bye-bye.